$600 billion. That's how much value NVIDIA lost in a single day last week. The largest single day drop in market history. And it all started because of an app. Not just any app, a Chinese AI model that did something nobody thought was possible. It matched the capabilities of America's tech giants while using a fraction of the competing power. In a matter of hours, the certainties that drove the biggest tech rally since the dot-com boom began to unravel. You know what's fascinating about moments like these? They often start small. A weekend release of an app called DeepSeek. A few viral posts from tech analysts. Then suddenly, by Monday morning, the market was in freefall. The thing is, most people still don't understand exactly what happened, or why it matters so much for the future of technology, markets, and global competition. That's what we're going to unpack today. How did we get here? What really happened? And most importantly, are we watching the first cracks appear in what might be the biggest tech bubble since 1999? Over the past two years, we've seen artificial intelligence companies create more wealth than practically any other innovation in history. The Nasdaq 100 rose 92% from the start of 2023, adding more than $14 trillion in value. It wasn't just hype, though there was plenty of that. We saw genuine breakthroughs. ChatGPT showed the world that AI could understand and respond to human language in ways that seemed almost magical. NVIDIA's chips were processing data at speeds that would have been seemed impossible just a few years ago. Companies like Microsoft, Google, and Meta were pouring billions into AI research and development. Let's talk about NVIDIA for a minute because their story is crucial to understanding this whole situation. In just two years, their stock went up nine times. They became more valuable than Amazon and more valuable than Alphabet. Why? because they had essentially cornered the market on the specialized chips needed to train and run AI models. It's not just that NVIDIA makes the best chips. It's that everyone believes you need their chips to compete in AI. That belief became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Companies were waiting months to get their hands on NVIDIA hardware, paying whatever price was asked. While all this was happening, there was another story developing that most people weren't paying attention to. Despite being cut off from access to the most advanced American chips, Chinese companies were quietly making progress in AI. They had to get creative, had to find ways to do more with less. Let's talk about the market structure that developed during this AI boom, because it's important for understanding why what happened next was so dramatic. The magnificent seven tech companies came to make up 30% of the S&P 500's value. Think about that. Seven companies representing nearly a third of the value of America's 500 largest public companies. And it wasn't just their market value that was concentrated. Their AI strategies were increasingly intertwined. Microsoft betting big on OpenAI. Google rushing to catch up with BARD. Meta open sourcing their Llama models, but still needing NVIDIA chips to train them. Everyone was playing the same game, making the same bet that American companies would maintain their lead in AI technology. Look at the investment numbers, because they're staggering. Microsoft committed $10 billion to OpenAI. Google poured billions into DeepMind. Meta's Reality Lab division, working on AI in virtual reality, spent over $40 billion. And just last week, we saw the announcement of $500 billion in planned AI investments backed by the White House. The assumption behind all of the spending was clear. AI would be like the internet, a technology where early leaders would build unalienable advantages. Their network effects would be too strong, the data advantages too significant for anyone to catch up. Now, during this time, in the broader economy, we had high inflation, rising interest rates, and a lot of uncertainty. But tech stocks, especially those associated with AI, seemed immune. They became a safe haven the place investors put their money when they're worried about everything else. Know what this reminded me of? The late 1990s, when anything with dot-com in its name could do no wrong. But there is a key difference. Unlike many dot-com companies, these AI giants were incredibly profitable. Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, they were making real money. The question wasn't whether they're viable businesses, but whether their AI investments would pay off the way everyone assumed they would. As we moved into 2024, 
The market's faith in AI seemed unshakable. Every positive headline about AI capabilities sent stocks soaring higher. Every announcement in, of new AI investments were met with enthusiasm. The phrase AI first became as common in earning calls as mobile first was a decade ago. But then came DeepSeek. But before we get into exactly what they did and why it mattered so much, let's take a step back and look at the state of AI development as it stood last week. Because to understand why DeepSeek was such a shock, you need to understand what everyone thought was true about AI development. The conventional wisdom was that building cutting edge AI models required three things. Massive amounts of computing power, meaning NVIDIA's chips, enormous data sets, which the big tech companies had, and large teams of specialized AI researchers, which only wealthy companies could afford. This created what seemed like a perfect moat. The best chips were restricted from sale to t Chinese companies. The largest data sets were controlled by American tech giants. And the top AI researchers were concentrated in American companies and universities. So when President Trump stood at the podium last week, declaring America was the global AI leader, it didn't seem like bravado. It seemed like a simple statement of fact. The AI trade seemed unstoppable. Until last Monday. The Nasdaq 100 plunged 3%, its worst day in six weeks. NVIDIA, the poster child of the AI boom, lost about $600 billion in market value in a single day. Th the largest one-day drop for any company in history. But here's what's more fascinating. More than 350 companies in the S&P 500 actually went up that day. This wasn't a market crash. It was a targeted reassessment of AI valuations. So what exactly did DeepSeek do that caused such a panic? Let's break it down. When DeepSeek introduced its DeepSeek V3 model the day after Christmas, it matched the abilities of the best chatbots from US companies like OpenAI and Google. But the team behind the new system also revealed a bigger step forward. In a research paper explaining how it built the technology, DeepSeek said it used only a fraction of the computer chips that leading AI companies relied on to train their systems. Over the weekend, their latest AI model shot up to the top of Apple's App Store charts. But it wasn't just another chatbot. It represented something far more significant. Proof that cutting-edge AI could be developed without the massive infrastructure everyone thought was necessary. There's an old saying in technology, the best engineering is often born of constraints. DeepSeek couldn't access NVIDIA's most advanced chips due to export restrictions. They couldn't tap into the massive data centers that power OpenAI and Google models. So they had to think differently. Let's get technical for a moment because the details really matter here. DeepSeek built their models using open source technology publicly available tools and techniques that anyone can access. But here's the kicker. They managed to achieve performance comparable to OpenAI and Meta's latest offerings while using significantly less computing power and energy. Think about what that means. The entire investment thesis for companies like NVIDIA was built on the assumption that you needed massive amounts of computing power to build competitive AI models. Companies were spending billions on data centers filled with high-end GPUs. But DeepSeek showed that maybe, just maybe, there's another way. Mark Andreessen, one of Silicon Valley's most influential investors, called it one of the most amazing and impressive breakthroughs, and AI's Sputnik moment. What really caught people's attention was how the model worked. It showed its reasoning step by step, making it potentially more useful for real world applications than some of its competitors. The broader implications are enormous. First, there's a question of global AI competition. Remember those chip export restrictions? They were supposed to keep China years behind in AI development. DeepSeek showed that innovative engineering could potentially overcome hardware limitations. But it goes deeper than that. The entire economic model of AI development is now being questioned. Companies like Microsoft, Meta, and Alphabet have committed hundreds of billions to AI infrastructure. They're building massive data centers, buying tens of thousands of high-end GPUs, hiring armies of researchers. But what if that's not the only path to success? Let's look at some specific sectors that might be affected. First, there's NVIDIA. The company quickly put out a statement saying that even efficient models like DeepSeek still needed significant numbers of GPUs for inference, the process of actually running the models. 
They're not wrong, but the question is, how many? And at what price point? Then there's the cloud computing providers, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. They've been betting big on AI, driving the next wave of cloud adoption. But what if AI models could be run more efficiently? What does that mean for their massive infrastructure investments? Now, some companies might actually benefit from this development. Take Salesforce or banks or major retailers, businesses that want to use AI but don't want to actually build it themselves. If they can deploy AI solutions for a fraction of the expected cost, that's a huge win for them. But there's a bigger question we need to ask. Are we in an AI bubble? The market reaction to DeepSeek suggests that some investors are starting to worry. Let's draw some historical parallels. In the 1990s, the internet really did change everything, but not in the way or on the timeline that many investors expected. Companies like Amazon and Google emerged as winners, but they weren't necessarily the ones with the highest valuations during the bubble. The same might be true for AI. The technology is revolutionary. That's not in question. But the assumption that the current leaders will automatically be the long-term winners? That's looking increasingly shaky. Here's another fascinating aspect. The democratization of AI development. DeepSeek built their model using open source technology. That means other companies, other researchers, other countries could potentially do the same. We might be entering an era where AI innovation comes from unexpected places. But there's also a geopolitical dimension to consider. The assumption of permanent US leadership in AI technology was comforting, perhaps too comforting. DeepSeek shows that innovation doesn't always follow predictable paths or respect national boundaries. So what does this mean for the future of AI? Remember how phones used to be these massive bricks in the 1980s and computers filled entire rooms before that? Well, technology has this funny pattern. Things often get bigger before they get smaller and smarter. We might be seeing the same thing happen with AI right now. Everyone thought you needed these massive supercomputers and incredible amounts of processing power to build cutting edge AI. It's like saying you need a Ferrari to win a race. But what DeepSeek just showed us is that maybe you can win with a really well-designed Honda instead. It's not about raw power anymore. It's about being clever with how you build the engine. Now, some folks are panicking about what this means for companies like NVIDIA. Their stock took a pretty big hit this week. But here's the thing. Most of the heavy lifting in AI isn't happening during the training phases anymore. That's when the AI models learn, like going to school. It's happening when these models are actually being used in the real world. So NVIDIA's chips are still going to be in high demand. They just might not need quite as many of them as everyone thought. DeepSea didn't just build a good AI model. They shared how they did it with everyone. Think about what happened when Linux, an open source operating system, came along. Today, it powers most of the internet, our phones, and even our smart TVs. When developers can freely use and improve something, they tend to flock to it like bees to honey. This could be a similar moment for AI. And let's be real for a minute. Does it really matter that this breakthrough came from China? Innovation is innovation. When the Japanese invented the Walkman, it revolutionized how we listen to music. When a South Korean company, Samsung, perfected smartphone screens, it changed mobile computing. Good ideas can come from anywhere, and they make all of our lives better. The bottom line, we might be entering a new chapter in AI. One where being clever matters more than being big. Where openness beats secrecy. And where innovation can come from anywhere in the world. And honestly, that's probably better for all of us in the long run. The DeepSeek wake-up call isn't just about one company or one technology. It's a reminder that in technology, today's certainties can become tomorrow's cautionary tales. The question isn't whether AI will transform our world, it's already doing that. The question is whether we've been thinking too narrowly about how that transformation will happen.